It is more than obvious at this point that not only is there a secret agency working around the clock to suppress any information regarding extraterrestrial life and definitive proof of the matter finding its way out into the public, but even this secret agency also works to intimidate, threaten, discredit or even attack people in the alien community who happen to stumble upon damning evidence or have spent their lives trying to expose the truth. This secret agency, be it an agency that works with the government or above them, has come to be known around the world as the Hidden Men in Black that will stop at no means to prevent the truth from leaking out into the public mind. Many skeptics will claim that supposed figures are nothing more than the paranoid manifestations of conspiracy theorists who try to validate their work, but the people who are truly in the know are well aware of the vast amount of evidence of such encounters with the men in black. So today, we will be going over the evidence and the encounters with this secret agency in the top five Men in Black encounters recovered and analysed by our researchers. Dr. Herbert Hopkins and the Missing Coin Many people regard the Men in Black as being nothing more than the appearance of government agents dressed in perfect black suits that attempt to cover up or use scare tactics to prevent the public at large from understanding the true occurrence of extraterrestrial activity. However, the men in black could also be something else entirely, something not human. This appears to be the case when reviewing the reports made by a Dr. Herbert Hopkins and his strange encounter with an individual who suddenly showed up at his house while he was conducting a private investigation. Dr. Herbert Hopkins was working as a consultant on a case involving a sighting of an unidentified flying object, as well as various other extraterrestrial claims that had occurred in the state of Maine. One night, as Dr. Hopkins was poring over further details of the case he had recovered, he received an eerie phone call from someone who claimed to be an activist in the alien community, who then further stated that not only did he wish to visit Hopkins, but he had additional evidence regarding the case. Dr. Hopkins was thrilled to hear this as any additional witness testimony and proof brought forward would certainly help him to better understand the situation that had occurred and so he gave the man the details of his address and directions on how to reach him. Oddly enough, it only took a few minutes before he heard the ring of his doorbell. The man that showed up to his house was described by Mr. Hopkins as wearing a perfectly pressed black suit and black tie. But this was far from the most noticeable thing about the man. According to Dr. Hopkins, the man in black had incredibly unusual facial features. The man had no hair of any kind, including a bald head, completely shaved eyebrows and no eyelashes. He was also so unbelievably pale to the point that it looked unhealthy and completely unnatural. Not wanting to be rude, Dr. Hopkins invited the strange man into the home to discuss the details of the case. When the strange man entered, Dr. Hopkins' dog began barking at the man erratically and demonstrated incredible uneasiness around him. The only thing out of the man's mouth were direct questions being asked about the details of the case, involving information that no one other than the current investigators were made aware of. After Dr. Hopkins answered his questions and told the man everything he had learned about the case, the conversation became a whole lot weirder. The man in black told Dr. Herbert Hopkins that there were two coins in his pocket and for the doctor to make sure he was correct. When the doctor checked his pockets, he found two coins and immediately became disturbed by this. The man in black then instructed the doctor to remove one of the coins in his pockets and to hold it in his hand. As the coin sat in the palm of the doctor's hand, he began to see what he described as the coin taking on a silvery appearance and then appeared as if it was going out of focus. After a few more seconds, the coin disappeared completely and was nowhere to be seen. The man in black then explained to Hopkins that the coin will never be seen on this plane again, implying that perhaps it's in a different plane of existence altogether. The man in black then asked the doctor if he was aware of the case of Barney Hill. For those that are not aware of Barney Hill, he was a famous collaborator in the alien community with interesting experiences and witness accounts. He and his wife worked tirelessly to develop the legitimate study of alien life before his untimely death that was already shrouded in conspiracy. 
The man in black then told Dr. Hopkins that the reason Barney had passed away was due to them using the same tactic as they did with a coin on Barney's heart. The man in black clarified by saying, just like you no longer have a coin, Barney didn't have a heart. The man in black then told Dr. Hopkins to destroy any material he had related to the UFO case and to no longer participate any further in the alien community. Extremely disturbed by this event, Dr. Hopkins immediately burned all the files he had relative to the case. Dr. Albert K. Bender Dr. Bender was a highly educated and intelligent man that so strongly believed in the alien phenomenon that he privately funded the creation of his business known as the International Flying Source of Bureau that would go on to investigate UFO claims and be a reliable and scientific private consulting firm. This firm would lead to promising results as the doctor was preparing to publish a paper revealing a vast amount of evidence and proof of the cover-ups made by the government and scientific evidence of extraterrestrials, forever to change the conversation about occurrences. This changed entirely after Dr. Bender claimed that three men, dressed in all black suits, went to his house and demonstrated supernatural abilities and threatened for him to shut down the Bureau and to destroy all of his files. Many of the doctor's colleagues and friends reported Bender as being a completely changed man after this men in black encounter, saying that he lived his life in constant paranoia and anxiety from then on, and refused to even talk about anything relating to the extraterrestrial, supernatural or paranormal. Interestingly enough, Dr. Albert Bender wrote about strange phone calls that plagued him throughout his life, even up until his death in 2002. The Spaceman and the Men in Black Jim Templeton, a father looking to spend a nice afternoon with his daughter, took a picture that would forever change his life. In the background of the photo was a man that looks a lot like an alien, and so was dubbed the Solway Firth Spaceman. Many people claimed that Templeton had edited the film and attempted to ruin his reputation. To prove the legitimacy of the photo, Mr. Templeton had the film verified as authentic by Kodak themselves, which then launched the story into publicity. Shortly after, news outlets began spreading this photo. Two government agents who identified themselves as 9 and 10 visited Templeton and demanded to see the site the photo was taken. It wasn't until a few years later that Templeton began making a strange connection. Two employees who worked at a missile launch pad in Australia called Templeton to tell him that they saw the same figure at the pad they worked at. Further investigations found that the missiles at the site had been produced only a couple of miles away from where Templeton took the photo. Photographic proof of the men in black Evidence of the men in black has been gathered to this day, but the most prominent of this evidence comes from a photo taken by Tim Green Beckley. Beckley was told by his friends Jack Robinson and Mary Robinson, who were prominent researchers in the UFO community, that strange men in black were going through their home, stealing or destroying files and even staring at their apartment from across the street. Eager to gather proof, Mr. Beckley went out to the Robinson home and found their claims to be true. He then took photographs of the men in black standing across the street, staring at the house and appears to be one of the most ironclad pieces of proof of these men in black. Dan Aykroyd and the Paranormal Most notably known for his comedic movies and popular celebrity entourage, Dan Aykroyd began work on a paranormal TV show that worked to ask experts for their opinions, consult on investigations, and treat the world of the paranormal as a legitimate field of study. According to Mr. Aykroyd, during one of his filming shoots, he stepped outside to take a private call without anyone listening in. As he was standing outside taking the call, he noticed a black Ford parked across the street and a strange tall man that stepped out of the car. This strange man then began staring at Mr. Aykroyd angrily. After feeling a little awkward, Mr. Aykroyd turned away for a moment before looking back and noticing the car and the strange tall man had completely vanished. After he finished his phone call and returned to the shoot, he was immediately told by the producers that the show had been cancelled and he was ordered to stop filming immediately. 
Though many people doubt his claims, to this day, Dan Aykroyd swears by what he saw and believes the cancelling of his show to be connected with these strange men in black.